Hello, anyone not still living in the 1970s? We interrupt your day to bring you this announcement. Husker Ninja is in the building. Alright, guys. We are here today with episode number six of the East Carolina Pirates Dynasty here on NCAA 14. And today we've got another conference game. We're taking on the number 16, Nebraska City Wildcats. And things could get pretty ugly here, not going to lie. As you take a look at the American standings of the American Athletic, ECU's 4-0, but this is actually their first conference game. And elsewhere, you can see the other division, Cincinnati's 1-0 in conference, leading that division. Nebraska City 0-1, they lost the conference game. And East Carolina looking to somehow make it two straight. Hello and welcome to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. We got a week six, ma week six matchup here for you today between the East Carolina Pirates and the number 16 Nebraska City Wildcats. The Wildcats coming in this game at 3-1, and one. they lost their conference opener. And this is this is East Carolina's first conference game of the year, I think. Nebraska City wins a toss and elects to kick. And so East Carolina will receive to start this game. And it'll be taken for a knee and a touchback. That'll come to the twenty five and we'll see what kind of what kinds of plans this Offense comes out with and how they plan to keep this electric um, Nebraska City offense off the field. They've also got to do it with their best running back on the team hurt for the next two weeks. Both this week and next week at South Florida. Um, oh, what's his name? Well, our starting running backs out for the next two weeks, and that'll make it tougher for Nebraska. Or for man, I'm bad at this. All right, that'll make it tougher for East Carolina to control the clock here against Nebraska City if they wish to win. All right, but head coach Husker Ninja told me before the game they were still going to plan to milk the clock as much as they could and try and run the clock down and can absolutely dominate the time of possession because he is convinced that is the only way they're going to be able to keep this thing close. Nebraska City's offense is just that good. And East Carolina's defense is not great if you haven't really been paying attention to the rest of this or to the season so far. They've given up a lot of points to teams like um, UTSA, UMass, I mean it's not a pretty sight always. Yeah, I know I'm not playing Pac-Man. I guess it finally decided to fix itself. But first down here for the East Carolina. Ball just shy of the 40. They gave it to Marquez Grayson right up the middle. And if the Pirates want to pull off this upset, they're going to need a really good game for, by Marquez Grayson. Ugh, backup running back's got to step up. When his team needs him the most here, they need him to have a fantastic game. Because it's going to be tough replacing the production from the starter. Mangus, there you go, Chris Mangus. It'll be tough to replace Mangus' pr production. The throw on the screen and the offensive line did not block or anything. That's not 39, and that's not what, Nebraska, or what East Carolina wants. 521 to go first quarter, a third and nine here for the Pirates. My guess is this will probably be four down territory, so they might look to just try and set up a more manageable fourth down, but there's a man wide open, and it's Williams again. Bryce Williams has been the number one target, but there's a flag down. It's going to be pass interference on pass interference on the right tackle. Are you kidding me? What's the right tackle doing in a position where he can pass interfere? He's supposed to be blocking the guys, not going out and catching a pass. 
Boy, you done goofed up, Mr. Right Tackle. And just for that, you getting benched for the life, pretty much, honestly. Like, that's stupid. Mr. Right Tackle. Rice. Or like Brandon Smith getting the start. So now it's third and nineteen again. And Mr. Right Tackle just found himself benched for that shenanigan. Going deep. Wanted Bryce Williams again. Thought he almost had him. It'll fall harmlessly to the turf incomplete. And so Nebraska or East Carolina's got a punt. This Nebraska City defense does their job. Aided thanks to a roughing the earth. Aided thanks to a pass interference on the offensive lineman. And Rice is benched. Like, I don't even care. He's benched. He, he, he's done. I mean, that's dumb. First down from their own 45 here for Nebraska City as they begin their first drive of this game. And not only did they... did. East Carolina need a good game from their backup running back. They need a good game from their defense. They'll give it to McCrybaby on first down and Cole McCrybaby already breaking tackles left and right. Gain of eight on first down sets up a second and two. They're already in East Carolina territory. Bought the Pirates 47. Four and a half to go first quarter. They'll give it to McCrybaby up the middle and he's got four yards and another first. McCrybaby with two carries for 12 yards. And it's a first down for Nebraska City from the 43 of the Pirates here. Man in motion for the Wildcats on first and 10. They'll give to Mick Crybaby on the counter. He's going to be brought down to the backfield. Loss of three. Dayon proud there to make the play. And it's a loss of three for Colt McCrybaby on first down. He's got three carries for nine yards. And it's 2nd and 13 from the East Carolina 46 here for Nebraska City. The Wildcats and Pirates scoreless here halfway through this first quarter. But Nebraska City looking to score on their first drive. And Mick Crybaby breaking tackles left and right again. Flops forward for a 9-yard gain. Pick up a couple extra yards. Why not? Sets up 3rd and 3 from the 37 of the Pirates for the Wildcats. We're at 3.20 to go here in this first quarter. Still a scoreless ball game. Glopter wants to take off. Down he goes. Loss of two. Big time sack right there. And Nebraska City is going to have to settle for a field goal. Sean James with the big time sack. But wait a minute. The Wildcats are going for it on fourth and five. East Carolina thought they did their job and had the field goal try. But no. They got to get another play, and it's a loss. Or not a loss, four-yard gain for Irby, but he didn't get the first. Big-time tackle right there by Brunson. And this Wildcat offense will come away with nothing. Big-time tackle by the middle linebacker on fourth down. So East Carolina punts, and Nebraska City fails on fourth down. And we're still scoring this year, 2.55 to go first quarter. Dowell in motion for the Pirates on first down. They'll give to Grayson. Tries to find the edge. He's got to gain eight. Four carries, 22 yards for Marquez Grayson. Filling in for these next two weeks for the injured Chris Mangus. And the ball is at their own 43 here for East Carolina. Second and two, under two and a half to go. Yeah, I, I know, like, recording it actually is better gameplay, but I can't do it because my Elgato's dumb. And they'll give the Grayson up the middle on second down. He'll pick up three yards and another first. Like, when I go to record it and then, and then I go to upload the recording, it just says, file not found. And it did that, like, every time for, like, a month. And so, we just, we stream everything now. That's the way it goes. 
First down for the Pirates here at their own 45. Under two minutes to go here, first quarter. Still the scoreless game between Nebraska City and East Carolina. They'll give it to Grayson. Grayson tries to get a block. He's got the edge, breaks a tackle. Finally knocked out of bounds inside the 35. 22 yard run by Marquez Grayson. He's got six carries, 47 yards, and it's a first down. And the Pirates have it at the 33 of Nebraska City. Coming up on a minute and a half to go here, first quarter. And shoot, stick and shoot a form, Husker Ninja. He said they were going to work on controlling the clock, and their goal was to dominate time of possession. And they have been milking this play clock for all it's worth every time out so far. They'll give to Grayson on the counter. Grayson, another big hole, and it's 14 more for Marquez Grayson. Seven carries, 61 yards for Grayson. And remember, fellas, Grayson is the backup halfback. He's not even the starter, and he's already finding a couple of seams here he can run against this Nebraska City defense. It's a first down from about the 19 of Nebraska City here for East Carolina. First time either team has been in the red zone today. 50 seconds to go here, first quarter. They'll give to Grayson up the middle. He's brought down after a gain of four. Eight carries, 65 yards today for Marquez Grayson. And it'll be a second and six coming up for East Carolina. Second and six from the 15 of Nebraska City for East Carolina. The Pirates in the red zone looking to strike first here in this game, and they have been milking the clock for all it's worth just about every single time out, just before every single snap running it to underneath five seconds. Second and six, they'll throw to Grayson on the screen. Grayson puts on a spin move. Not going to do much. A four-yard reception on the halfback screen, though, for Marquez Grayson. And that'll do it for the first quarter. One gone, three to go here in Greenville, North Carolina. And East Carolina, number 16, Nebraska City, are tied at nothing. But the Pirates have a third down in the red zone when we come back. Third and three from the 11 of Nebraska City for East Carolina as we begin this second quarter. This is a big third down here for the Pirates. Has a man underneath. It's Jones. He's got the first down on a gain of five. Nice catch there by Isaiah Jones and a way to break a tackle and pick up the first. Keith, two of four for nine yards. And it's a first and goal from the six in Nebraska City here for East Carolina. First down and goal. The Pirates six yards away from the end zone in the lead here in this game. Just working on running the clock again. That's something head coach Husky just said was a priority in practice. Making sure his players knew they were running this play clock down every single snap. Has a man on the slant. Diving catch. What a grab. Isaiah Jones with the Sports Center top 10 catch on the slant. And a six yard touchdown connection from Cody Keith to Isaiah. So Isaiah Jones in Nebraska City is trailing here. East Carolina takes the lead on the number 16th ranked Wildcats. What a thing of beauty there by Isaiah Jones. An absolutely amazing highlight reel grab. And Isaiah Jones, welcome to the Sports Center Top 10, young man. The extra point is right down the middle, and we got a studio update. Penn State leading number 5, Wisconsin, 14-7. 13-55 to go second quarter there in Madison. Our score here is East Carolina 7, number 16, Nebraska City, nothing. 6-29 to go first half here in Greenville, North Carolina. The Pirates have just taken the lead on an acrobatic Sports Center top 10 worthy catch by Isaiah Jones. And now we'll see what this defense can do after their offense has given them the lead. 
Nebraska City will set up shop at their own 26. And they'll give to Mick Crybaby up the middle on first down. He's got a big hole and a gain and iron right up the middle. Five carries, 27 yards for Colt McCry, baby. It's second and one for Nebraska City. Six minutes to go here. First half, they'll give to McCry, baby. Again, McCry, baby, a big hole. Finally dragged down by Brunson. But it's nine more yards for Colt McCry, baby. First down now from their own 44 here for Nebraska City. Coming up on 5.50 to go first half. The Wildcats trail East Carolina 7 0. They'll give to Mick Crybaby again, and Mick Crybaby with a huge hole this time. Finally dragged down by Gibson, but not before a big run for a gain of 31 by Colt Mick Crybaby. First down from the 25 of East Carolina, thanks to the 31 yard run by the tailback, Colt Mick Crybaby. And they'll give it to him again on first down right up the middle, but only for a gain of two this time. Eight carries, 69 yards for Colt McCry, baby. It is second and eight from the 24 of the Pirates here for East Carolina as they're looking to even things up coming up on 5-10 to go first half. They trail the Pirates 7-0 for the time being. Glafter wants to take off. Down he goes. Nice tackle there. Just good team defense containing Randall Glopter when he wanted to scramble. Finally dragged down by Belton, I think. And it's third and seven coming up for East Carolina. Oh, no, not Belton. Benton, my bad. So is there any caught by Roberson? Where was the defense? Lawrence Robert or Roberson with a 10-yard reception in the first down to the 12 of East Carolina. Glopter's 2 of 2 for 14 yards, and Nebraska City in the red zone for their first time today. They'll give to Mick Crybaby up the middle. He's going to be brought down by Gibson after a gain of 10. Set up second in inches. 9 carries, 79 yards for Mick Crybaby. Second in inches from the 2 of the Pirates. Can this East Carolina defense come up with a miracle goal line stand? Glopter back to pass. Down he goes. Loss of four. Big time sack is Tavares Brunson again. And Brunson has been all over the field from the middle linebacker spot this year. Making big plays in pretty much every single game. Third and four from the sixth of East Carolina for Nebraska City. Under 3.50 to go first half. East Carolina leads the number 16th ranked Wildcats 7 nothing. Glopter wants to take off. He'll fall into the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska City. There's good coverage that time by the East Carolina defense, but no one home to stop the QB scramble. And Glopter will get in for the six-yard touchdown run to tie this game at seven, pending the extra point. And the extra point is right down the middle, so we got another studio update for you guys. Number 10, Oklahoma is tied with Texas at 24. Fourth quarter hasn't even started yet in this Red River rivalry. They're at the end of the third quarter there. And that would be a pretty big upset if Texas were to knock off their rivals. We'll have to keep you updated on that game as it happens. The kick will go out of the back of the end zone. And so to come out to the 25, and that's where East Carolina will set up shop for their next drive. Had a good bit of momentum going with the running game on their last drive. Did this Pirates offense. We'll see if that continues on this drive. First down from their own 25, 343 to go first half. We had a 7-7 game here at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. And Grayson will get the handoff right up the middle for seven more. Nine carries, 72 yards for Marquez Grayson, and he's filling in admirably for the injured, for the injured Chris Mangum. And remember, this is not the only week Mangum is hurt. It will be out this week and then next week when the Pirates travel to Florida to take down the South Florida Bulls. 
And then Grayson should be back the week after that. Or not Grayson, but Mangum should be back the week after that. But Grayson with a chance to prove maybe he should get more touches even when Mangum does return. And he'll go right up the middle again. Big run there by Marquez Grayson. 10 carries, 89 yards. That one good for 17. And it's a first down from their own 49. So East Carolina is just shy of midfield. Coming up on 2.50 to go here first half. It's a 7-7 ball game here at Dolly Ficklin Stadium in Greenville. And Husker Ninja, even though clock's starting to run down a little bit in this first half, still trying to make sure they milk the clock. Grayson tries to find the edge. Can't get one more block. If it could have, it would have really been a big gain. As it is, it's still a gain of five. 11 carries, 94 yards for Marquez Grayson. It's second and five from the 46 of Nebraska City. And again, just milking the clock. They want to make sure they get some points before halftime, but that Nebraska City, that their offense will not have the ball again. They want this to be the last possession of this first half. No one really open. Keith wants to take off. And that's not going to work. It's a two-yard sack. The pocket collapsed, and Keith couldn't get away. Austin Stratton there to make the play for the Wildcats. And this is probably no man's land, so I would expect East Carolina to try and set up a more manageable fourth down. It's third and seven. The Pirates are one of two on third downs today, but they need seven to convert. My guess is they'll... Just look for a more manageable fourth down, but they don't need it as Bryce Williams is all alone underneath the middle of the field. Ten-yard reception for the tight end. Not the first time we've called his name today, but his first catch was actually wiped out by a pass interference on the right tackle, who has sin since been benched. Husker Ninja is not amused. No one really open. Keith wants to take off. Gets away from one, but not two. Loss of four. That's the second sack on this drive for this Wildcat defense. This time it's Raymond McCray. And they were actually in a QB spy, so Keith never really had a chance. But at least he didn't force a throw. Second and 14. Taking a shot deep. Diving catch. What a grab by Devon Grayson. 30 yards and a first down for East Carolina from the 12 of the pot or from the 12 of the Wildcats. 5 of 7, 55 yards, one score today for Cody Keith. Just like that, after another diving catch from one of this one of these East Carolina receivers, they're in the red zone for the second time at the Nebraska City 12. So and underneath got Grayson. And Marquez Grayson will pick up nine, and now East Carolina will call a timeout. It's second and one from the three of the Wildcats for East Carolina. Fifteen seconds to go first half. They'll give the Grayson on the counter, and he's going to fight for it and not get into the end zone, actually. 12 carries, 96 yards for Grayson, and they're going to mark him down at the 1. And so you know what time it is now. You know what time that means. First down and goal from the 1, and I bet you can guess what this play is going to be. 11 seconds to go first half. My guess is if the Pirates don't get it in on this play, they are going to milk the clock and kick a chip shot field goal to end the first half. They'll give it to Johnson, and Joey Johnson, the fullback, is in untouched. Touchdown, East Carolina. You knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. On the goal line, and in or in very close, like third and inches, fourth and inches situations, Oscar Ninja, he likes to call up on his fullback to make the play, and this time Joey Johnson is into the end zone untouched. So a nice time-consuming drive there by East Carolina to respond to Nebraska City's touchdown. 
And they take the lead with only 9 seconds to go in the first half. It's a 7 point lead. Went 72 yards in 10 plays in 3 minutes 34 seconds. And so East Carolina's got the 14 7 lead. Nine seconds to go, first half. We'll see if they come out with maybe a squib attempt or what. They'll kick it long, but short side it has to be returned. McLaughlin, he's got a 17 yard return. And there's still six seconds left in this first half. So it's time for Randall Glofter to get in probably a couple Hail Mary throws and try and get at least a field goal here in these final six seconds of the first half. But they'll just give to Mick Crybaby up the middle. An interesting decision. Mick Crybaby still going. Bounces off one tackle but not two. 26 yards for Mick Crybaby when it should have been like seven. What a hard run by Mick Crybaby but that will burn out the final six seconds of the half. And we're going to the locker rooms. East Carolina with the 14-7 halftime lead over the number 16 Wildcats. Nebraska City does get the ball to start the second half, though. And so we'll see if they can get a quick response or what they'll do on their first drive of the second half to try and answer East Carolina's touchdown right before the break. 26-yard return by Gregory McLaughlin. And the Wildcats will set up shop of their own 24. First down here for Nebraska City. First shot of the second half here. The number 16 Wildcats trail East Carolina 14-7. They'll give to Mick Crybaby and he's still breaking all kinds of tackles. 11 yards and a first down for Colt Mick Crybaby. He's got 11 carries and 116 yards. Just impossible for really anyone to stop him. We'll see what kind of other adjustments both coordinators and head coach Husker Ninja have made. As they had the halftime lead, but they know this offense is potent. They'll give the Mick Cry baby. He's got a gain of three on the counter. Twelve carries, 119 yards for Mick Cry baby, and there it is. There's that absolute terrible stamina and getting injured all the time. Cole Crybaby goes down. And second and seven here. They'll give Derby up the middle. Arthur Irby's going to be tough to bring down too, it looks like. He's got a gain of seven. Finally brought down by Brian Gibson. But it'll be third down and in inches here for Nebraska City. Crybaby suffered a strained shoulder, and he'll return to the game shortly. Third and inches for Nebraska City. They'll give Derby up the middle, and he's got a good eight yards before he's going to be even meet any kind of contact. Two carries, 15 yards for Arthur Irby. Deveris Brunson with six tackles, one for a loss, and a sack. And it's a first down from the 48 of the Wildcats. As Glopter wants to run the option, but he's brought down to the backfield. Dayon Proud again. His second tackle for a loss, and that one was a big-time tackle. Just absolutely blow the play up on first down and set up second and 14 with the play in the backfield. And Nebraska City has it at, I think, their own 48. 525 to go. Third quarter throws underneath to Irby. Irby with a six-yard reception to set up a more manageable third and seven. He's got two catches for 10 yards. And it's third and seven from the 45 of the Pirates here for Nebraska City. Brunson with his seventh stop of the game on that last play. Three of four on third downs for the Wildcats. They need seven here. Glopter wants to take off. He's going to be sacked. It's a loss of two. This time it's my or Mike Myers. Sorry, Mike Myers getting in on the action. And that's got to be at least four sacks, I think, for this Pirate defense today. So fourth and ten at Nebraska City. They, get some, they did do some nice things on that drive, but it ultimately ends in a punt. And it'll go into the end zone for a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 20. That's where East Carolina will set up shop for their first drive of the second half.
Alright, so East Carolina, they really estab established a pretty dominant run game in that first half. We'll see if that continues here in the second. They'll give to Grayson up the middle on first down, and Mark has Grayson will pick up five more yards. That'll put him over the 100-yard mark for the day. 13 carries, 101 yards, averaging 7.8 yards per carry. Second and five here from their own 25 for East Carolina. Coming up on four minutes to go here, third quarter. The Pirates holding on to their 14-7 lead over the number 16th ranked Nebraska City Wildcats. And again, they're coming out in the second half and running this play clock down to under three seconds before they snap it. Throws underneath, caught by Grayson out of the backfield. Mark has Grayson with a gain of 12 and another first down for East Carolina. Two catches, 16 yards for Grayson. And it's first down from their own 37. Keith, 7 of 9, 76 yards, one score. First down from their own 37 for East Carolina. Under 3.40 to go, third quarter. The Pirates holding on to a 14-7 lead over the number 16 team in the nation, the Nebraska City Wildcats. Under three and a half to go now, third quarter. They'll give to Grayson up the middle, and Grayson's going to be brought down after a minimal gain. They'll call it a gain of one. 14 carries, 102 yards for Grayson. And that will set up a second and nine here. Raymond McCray with his fifth stop of the day for this Nebraska City defense. And we're under three minutes to go here in this third quarter. Second and nine from their own 39 coming up for East Carolina. And again, just milking the clock down as much as they can. Head coach Hushkinin just said that was a goal and he's stuck to it. They'll just get the snap off, actually. Grayson will break one tackle. Shubin brought down in the backfield, but Grayson will plow ahead for a gain of four. 15 carries, 106 yards for Marquez Grayson. And I think he's making a case to say he should get some touches even when Mangum comes back from injury. I know, Mangus. Not Mangum, sorry, my bad. I mean, Mangus isn't going to lose his job because of injury, and he was having a good rushing season in his own right. But maybe he'll have to give Grayson some more catch it, or touches. Third and five here for East Carolina. Throws over the middle. Caught by Grayson. Devon Grayson with 15 yards and another timely catch. He had an acrobatic diving catch toward the end of the first half to set up that touchdown. And he comes up with another big-time grab on third and five to move the chains for East Carolina. Grayson with three catches for 54 yards. Keys 8 of 10 for 91 yards and a score. And we're under two minutes to go here in this first quarter. Or third quarter, sorry. They've got it inside midfield at the 42 of the Wildcats. And if East Carolina can really run this clock down into even the fourth quarter, maybe, and they end up with a touchdown, that might be enough to put the Wildcats away. They'll give to Grayson up the middle. Grayson with a gain of seven on first down. 16 carries, 113 yards for Marquez Grayson, averaging 7.1 yard, yards per carry. And he's really making a case that he should... Get some touches when Mangus comes back from his injury. He obviously won't be starting, but maybe they need to give him just a little bit more touches. Under a minute to go here in this third quarter. 14-7 East Carolina leads number 16, Nebraska City. As a man open underneath, it's Bryce Williams again, and the tight end has been left open on both of his official catches. It was left open on his unofficial catch. That was a big gain, but was called back thanks to a pass interference on the right tackle, who has since been benched for the rest of the year for sure. Maybe even the rest of his career. I mean, Husker Ninja was absolutely livid on the sideline. But Williams wide open there, makes a big-time catch. 
And it'll be first down from inside the 30 here for East Carolina. They'll give the Grayson up the middle, bounces off one tackle, and picks up two more. 17 carries, 115 yards for Grayson. And I have no doubt that head coach Hushka Ninja will be content to let the clock run out here in this third quarter. They don't even need to run another snap. And that will indeed do it for this third quarter of play. One quarter to go here at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. And this hometown crowd is smelling and upset. East Carolina one quarter away from taking down the number 16th ranked Nebraska City Wildcats. The Pirates seed at 14-7 and they got a second and eight from the Nebraska City 21 when we come back. That's right, so these next two plays will be pretty big plays to help determine who wins this game, I do believe. It's second and eight from the 21 of Nebraska City. East Carolina with the 14-7 lead. They got a second and eight from the Wildcat 21 as we begin this final quarter of play. Can the Pirates hold on and complete the upset in front of the hometown fans? They'll give to Grayson up the middle for a gain of five. He's got 18 carries, 120 yards. Julian Horton with his sixth stop for this Nebraska City defense. And it is third and three from the 13 of Nebraska City. Three of four on third downs today for East Carolina. They've had two red zone trips. That's what resulted in their two touchdowns of the day. It's third and three, three of four on third downs. We'll see what this pirate defense or pirate offense rather comes up with. They might be playing it safe and just electing to make maybe an easier field goal a try. But Grayson says forget that. He'll go up the middle and pick up the first down anyway. Game of six up the middle. Nineteen carries, hundred and twenty six yards for Marquez Grayson. And it's a first down from the ten of Nebraska City. So pretty much first and goal, even if that's not what the scoreboard is officially saying. And again, just milking this clock for all it's worth. That is one thing that has really helped keep East Carolina in this game, I do believe, is they have dominated the time of possession. They want the screen. Grayson's got a block. And Mark has Grayson will get six more yards on first down on the halfback screen. Three catches, 22 yards for Grayson. Second and four from the four of Nebraska City. We are under five and a half to go. And I think if East Carolina gets it in, that might be enough to put the Wildcats away. I'm still not sure because, I mean, five minutes is a lot of time, especially for a high-powered offense like Nebraska City. But, I mean, East Carolina's been able to run the ball pretty well. They'll give the Grayson up the middle. He's only got two yards there, though. 20 rushes, 128 yards for Marquez Grayson, averaging just under 6.5 yards per carry. Third down and two from the two of the Wildcats. This is a big play for everyone involved. Because 10 points is a lot easier than 14. Okay, maybe not, but it's easier. A big goal line stand here by Nebraska City would be huge. And a red zone turnover would be even bigger. Under four and a half to go. They'll give the Grayson up the middle. Then they're not going to give him the touchdown. 21 carries, 130 yards. I thought he was in. I thought the read option was going to give us a touchdown. But they're going to give him a first and goal anyway from the one of the Wildcats. So it's third down and ten, or like third and two. I didn't even think it was possible to get another first down, but they must have just barely gotten it. That's how close... That's how close Marquez Grayson was to a touchdown right there. First and goal, they'll give to Scott. And Anthony Scott, the third string running back, will get in. Man, Scott, they went on the halfback sweep. They were kind of expecting Nebraska City to maybe try and stuff the, stuff the line of scrimmage to attempt to run right up the middle. 
And with 359 of y'all, that drive went 72 yards in 14 plays in 7 minutes and 20 seconds. That's insane. 7 minutes on that drive. On that drive alone took 7 minutes 20 seconds. And now Nebraska City's backs are against the walls. We've got a studio update. It's another upset. Kansas State takes down number 4 TCU in, in Fort Worth. Final was 27 to 20 there. Elsewhere, Cincinnati takes down UConn 20 to 14. Our score in our game here is East Carolina 21, number 16, Nebraska City 7. Only 359 remains. So Nebraska City will need a quick strike, and then they'll need the defense to be able to stop the run. You take a look at getting defensive. No turnovers yet for either team. East Carolina with three sacks. Nebraska City with two. First down from their own 25 here for Nebraska City. 359 yards. It's a 14 point East Carolina lead. Glopter will break one tackle. He'll break two. Nearly broke away from Speller again, and that one could have been even bigger than the 28 yards it already was. Seven carries, 23 yards in the score for Glopter. And all of a sudden, it's like this East Carolina defense is off the field so long they forgot how to tackle. First down from their own 48 for the Wildcats. 340 coming up here in this game. They'll give the Mick Crybaby on the counter. Mick Crybaby will pick up seven more yards on first down. Sets up second and three from the 40 of Nebraska. Or from the 40 of the Pirates, sorry. From the East Carolina, 40 McCry, baby, 13 carries, 126 yards. Brunson with his eighth stop for this Pirate defense, under 320 to go. They'll go to McCry, baby. McCry, baby has the edge, and he's got another big run. This one good for 16. And now they're going to go hurry up his Nebraska City. 14 carries, 142 yards for Colt McCry, baby. First down from the 25 of. East Carolina, and they'll throw underneath to Terrell Miller for a gain of three on first down. Sets up a second and seven from the 21 of the Pirates. Four, four for 23 yards a day for Randall Glopter. We're at 250 to go in this game. They'll give to Irby. Irby will shed one tackle, but not two, and he's got a gain of four. It's a third down and 17, or third down and three here from the 17 of East Carolina. Second red zone trip for the Wildcats. First one resulted in a touchdown. Three of five on third downs. Glopter will break one tackle, and he'll shed out, or he'll evade three more defenders and pick up 11. That should have been a sack, or at the very least, a minimal gain, and Glopter turned it into an 11 yard rush. First and goal from the six of the Pirates here for Nebraska City. Number 16, Nebraska City not dead yet. They'll give to Mick Cry, baby. He's in. Touchdown, Wildcats. And now it's a one-score game. 2-11 to go. That was a quick strike Nebraska City needed. They've got all three timeouts, and now their defense just needs one stop. They just need one stop, and they could... Maybe try and steal this game from the Pirates despite be, being, I feel anyway, I feel East Carolina has outplayed Nebraska City. Grayson trying to get a block. That's not going to happen. 19-yard return for Marquez Grayson. You take a look at the last five drives for East Carolina. It was a punt and then three straight touchdowns. Possessions have been at a premium in this game. Thanks in large part to East Carolina's just grinding, grinding style of offense in this game. They have controlled the clock and they have held the ball for most of this game. They'll give to Grayson up the middle for a gain of 11 on first down. And I'm not sure I agree with this. Hushin is like, all right, let's do it again. Head coach rushing in, you're like, all right, let's run it up the middle a couple more times because Nebraska City is electing to use their timeouts now. And that's a little surprising for me considering you still got two minutes to go. Especially since 
Grayson went in untouched for a gain of 11 and a first down. So now they might not even really need a first down. Actually, no, they still do because with two minutes left, there's still quite a bit of game. I right, can't milk the rest of the clock, honestly. But one more first down ought to about do it. 2-0-1 to go. Grayson's got a block. He's got another one, and Grayson with a big-time run. Breaks another tackle. Grayson tripped up by his shoestrings after a 53-yard run. You think this backup halfback wasn't ready to play? Head coach Huskerman just said in an interview, and Marquez Grayson repeated it, that he's like, hey, Marquez, you know, we need you in this game. We want to control the clock. And that means we need to have a running game, and that means we're counting on you to get us yards. Can you do it? And Grayson said, of course, coach. And he's proved it here today. We In the red zone for the fourth time today is this East Carolina offense. They've got three touchdowns out of their first three, and the Wildcats are out of timeouts. With only a minute 53 to go, that 53-yard run might have been all she wrote. They'll give to Grayson again. He's up the middle for 12 more. 25 carries, 211 yards for Marquez Grayson. What a game from the backup running back. And he's saying, yo, coach, I see you. I see you. Put, I, I, hey, hey, coach Husker Ninja, I see you. I see you, man. I see you're putting your trust in me to be able to get some yards. I won't let you down, and maybe you'll be willing to give me the rock a little bit more when... Mangus does return from his injury, and I think it would be a smart idea to do exactly that. They'll give to Grayson up the middle on the read option, and Grayson will pick up three more. 26 carries, 214 yards for Grayson, averaging over eight yards a carry. Second and goal from the two. We got about a minute to go, but even if Nebraska City's defense can hold the field goal attempt, It'll be too little too late as a two-score game with under a minute to go is going to be too much to overcome, I'm afraid. We're under 50 seconds to go. They'll give to Cody Keith. He's going to be brought down after a game of two just shy of the end zone. Third down and goal from the one. Kenton Burke with his fifth stop of the game. Five of six on third down for East Carolina. And they're going to call a timeout right now. They don't want Scott in. They want Grayson to get his touchdown because he's earned it. Dang it. Five of six on third downs. Let's try again. Grayson is in the field now. They give the Grayson up the middle and he's in. Touchdown East Carolina. Now they're not really trying to run up the score. But Hoskin injuries like... Yo, Grayson, Grayson, he played lights out today. He's got over 200 yards on the defense of the number 16 team in the nation. Over 200 rushing yards against a top 25 def or against the defense of a top 25 team. And so he's like, you know what, I think you should get a touchdown. And Grayson does right there. We got a studio update. It was a nail biter in Lincoln. But number one, Nebraska takes down number two, Ohio State, 24 to 21. O'Brien only had 58 yards for the Huskers, but he also threw for two scores. Elsewhere, the upset's complete, and it's not even close. Penn State storms into Madison, and they take take down the number five, Wisconsin Badgers, 40 to 14. Well, we're about to see our our third top 25 upsets. At least to my knowledge, our third top 25 upset of this week. East Carolina with a 14-point lead over number 16, Nebraska City, 28-14. to And with only 25 seconds left and the Wildcats out of timeouts, the upset is complete. And player, you take a look at total yards, 99 more yards of offense for East Carolina. They've got 323 total yards. Nebraska City with 224. But as I was saying, the player of the game is going to be Marquez Grayson without a doubt. Mangus, is, Mangus goes down with an injury last week. 
And so they know they need a big game from Grayson to back up if they want to be able to control the clock and pull off the upset. And Grayson responds in a big way, averaging about 8 yards a carry, over 200 yards on the ground. He had a touchdown. Glafter wants to scramble. Avoids a sack. Throws on the slant caught by Kendrick Cole for a gain of 14. So they're going to get some garbage time yardage. Try and maybe get another touchdown to make the final score more respectable. Glafter will spike it there. Second and 10. 13 seconds left. Ball is at their own 40 here for the Wildcats. And all I can do is hope to get a big play and make it a one-score game. Throws underneath, nearly picked off. Deshaun Amos could have had the pick. Instead, he dropped it. 5 of 7, 37 yards for Andrew Glofter. The Wildcats, 4 of 6 on third downs. And it's third and 10 with only 8 seconds to go. Glofter, down he goes, it's a sack. And that'll be how this game will end. Kyron Spaller with the sack on the game's final play, and the upset is complete. Number 16 has fallen here in Greenville, North Carolina. The East Carolina Pirates shock the world. They take down the Nebraska City Wildcats 28-14, to and they will improve to 5-0 and in year one under head coach Husker Ninja. He's coming in, and he's starting to bring a change in the culture here at East Carolina and I think this Pirates football program is it's a football program that is on the rise in the couple of years they could maybe be contenders nationally but we gotta take a look at the team stats just to show you the complete domination in the time of possession 18 minutes and 30 seconds for East Carolina 9 minutes 30 seconds for Nebraska City. The Pirates doubled up Nebraska City for the time of possession, and that's a big reason why they pulled off the upset here today. Keith went 10 to 12, 110 yards in the score. We had timely acrobatic sports center top 10 worthy catches from a multitude of Pirate receivers. But the star of the day is Marquez Grayson, the junior or the redshirt junior halfback. He's the backup filling in for the injured Chris Mangus, and he goes off. 27 carries, 215 yards, averaging just shy of eight yards a carry. It was 7.9, and a touchdown, a long of 53 yards, and receiving. Devon Grayson, he had big catches in all the big moments, it seemed like. He only had three catches, but every single one of them were honestly pretty big moments in the game. Like his acrobatic Sports Center top 10 worthy catch to set up the score before the half. That ultimately put the Pirates up for good. Isaiah Jones had two catches for 11 yards, but he had an acrobatic diving one handed grab to set up the first score of the game. And so the Pirates could have two grabs on the Sports Center top 10 tonight. The upset is complete. East Carolina takes down number 16, Nebraska City, 28 to 14. That will do it for me, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day, everybody.